I'm making this video because I'm attracted to anthro spider women. Is, is that your opening line? That feels a bit sensationalistic. Yes, because in this world of lies and deception and misinformation, nothing is more sensational than the truth! And we read that! I was first acquainted with spider sex when researching the video before last. Also, when I was researching Hot Wheels Sisyphus from the Latin name video, which I know came first and therefore completely invalidated that last statement. Whatever. Let's talk about it. That is, what is sex? Well, strictly speaking, sex isn't scientifically defined, but the terms mating and copulation both refer to the processes and rituals used by a male to transfer his sperm to the reproductive system of a female. This video is mostly going to focus on unique and interesting spider practices, but first, let's touch on the anatomy. The penis, a distal extension of the male reproductive system used for penetrating the female and depositing sperm internally, was not developed in spiders. As is typical, reproductive anatomy varies wildly from clade to clade, and we generally believe that the genital tubercle, which becomes the male penis and the female clitoris, evolved in amniotes, though this is contested. Although you can mate without penetration, it's not ideal because, well, because the female has to consent, which is why most non-spawning animals have an analogous structure. For fish, they have the gonopodium, evolved from the anal fin, for sharks, it's the claspers, evolved from the pelvic fin. Crustaceans have derived sexual tubes that emerged outwards like those of humans. And some flies have a female who penetrates the male to collect sperm. And spiders and octopi use modified legs. The male ejaculates out of the hole he has instead of a penis, and then collects the sperm into special webs. From there, he sucks it up into these things on his modified arms. The palpal bulb can now be inserted into either of the female's sex holes in her sex plate, and enter its expanded form, where the male tube tubes extend up the female tubes and deposit sperm in her sperm container. Now, if sperm was in active form the entire time, it would dry out and die in the male's pedipalps. Instead, it's stored curled up and in a capsule. In the female spermatheca, the sperm is decapsulated and enters its active state. As we discussed two weeks ago, if she carries the sperm for long enough, it causes her to ovulate and lay eggs. That much is all common knowledge, but what are the habits relating to it? You may know that the female spiders eat the male. You may also know that most of them don't. Well, most is a strong word. It's complicated because it's not exactly a yes-no thing, and rates of cannibalism vary, and spiders are very diverse, blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. We're only talking about cannibalistic spiders in this video, so why do they eat the males? Well, before mating, females have a number of reasons to weigh. Each male spider might be their last, and if they don't already have sperm in their spermatheca, they're taking a chance by not mating. But if they do eat a male, that gives them food, and they can survive longer and produce more offspring. Generally, small and unhealthy males are eaten, and large males are mated with to provide the best genes. After mating, all bets are off. Once you have his sperm, he has served his purpose and is now just food. Now, a cursory glance would indicate that this is absolutely correct. However, just because your sperm is in a female doesn't mean it's met the eggs. And if a better male comes along, she can eject the contents of her spermatheca. It's not good enough. Hot Wheels Sisyphus proposes the first solution to this problem. The male embolus is long enough to reach directly into the female's ovaries and automatically fertilize them. Or was, I should say. The females evolved larger copulatory ducts, and the males evolved longer emboli, and blah blah blah. Now the male embolus is as long and loopy as a Hot Wheels track, and the female copulatory duct is as cyclical as the cyclical punishment of the ancient Greek mythological figure of Sisyphus. A mother, much more common tactic, is to rip off your pedipalps. With the pedipalp embedded in the female's copulatory openings, you can escape while the sperm is still entering her. It also means that the opening is obstructed for other males, and now she can't use it to empty out your your sperm. It also means that you're free to not get eaten. Or to get eaten. The male redback spider actually manages to clog up both openings, completely monopolizing the female, and all he has to do is distract her by literally feeding himself to her. But in other species, it's still common to rip off the pedipalps, even though you can only manage one without getting eaten. From there, they defend the other hole personally. But let's clear a few things up first. Now, as hot as that would be, the male is not helplessly approaching some monster. Research right now seems to indicate that male spiders are the right size, and females are way too big for no reason. Well, not no reason and mostly because bigger body means more eggs and better eggs, so they get bigger. Also, they don't really need reflexes because they rely on the web to trap insects.
All this to say, a male is not in danger being in the female's web. A male is in danger when he comes close enough to mate. In some species, many males congregate in the web to compete over the females, which brings me back to this guy. He's lost one pedophile, but the female still has one hole open, so he has to prevent the other males from mating by fighting them. For uncertain reasons, it's been determined that the eunuch male, the one missing a pedophile, generally fights better than other males. So let's go back to this post I made after reading a completely heartless experiment. Catapulting? Well, some males actually have the chance to get away. By tensing their leg muscles, they can jump away at insane speeds, avoiding the female's reaction time, and escape her bite. So now you're free to carry on with your life. So what do you need to do? Well, you really need to mate with a female. Hey, there's a female right there. Let's go. Yes, the males go back to the same female, and the female lets them. This can repeat up to six times. This is so routine for some of them that they often attach themselves to the female before jumping, just so it's not so much of a hassle to come back. Males can ensure their safety in other ways. For a long time, scientists have observed males wrapping their silk around the females, preventing them from being eaten. And in instances where the males are unable to, they are eaten. The most obvious conclusion is that the females, restrained by web, is unable to eat the male. More recently, we discovered it's more complicated than that. Referred to as the bridal veil, cracks started showing this most prevalent theory when it was A, observed in species where the female doesn't normally eat the male, and B, not actually strong enough to restrain the female. At most, it could be used to provide the male a brief moment to get away, although even this is outdated. More generally, it can be used to deposit pheromones all over her body, putting her in a mating mood. A lot of people draw parallels between the bridal veil and bondage. I'm not an expert, but in bondage, Bondage, the pleasure is derived from the feeling of being restrained, and as is the catalyst for all of this research, female spiders aren't restrained by the bridal veil. Also, it still works even if the male doesn't have any webs. Funnily enough, I don't think bondage would work if you didn't you know, bind your partner. But in that vein, another compelling theory is that it stimulates the female's sensory hairs in unusual ways. If a spider senses a single thing brush against her, she might assume it's prey. If she feels a bunch of silk surrounding her, it's less likely to evoke a predatory response. We can't exactly reach into the minds of spiders and determine exactly what they're thinking, but right now, the general idea is that both the bridal veil and the process of spinning it around the female put her in a mental state appropriate for mating. In a similar vein, males of Darwin's bark spider perform oral sex on the female, salivating on her genitals throughout copulation. Further research is necessary to determine why. The most obvious reason would be that the saliva contains, you guessed it, pheromones. But who knows, maybe she just likes it. So that so far was pretty titillating, but I would advise you to drop that pretense of mapping it onto humans right now, because from now on, it gets pretty malicious. Starting with the Cosby treatment. The funnel web spiders. No, not those ones. A Gelinopsis aperta uses pheromones to induce an unconscious state in the females. This is crucial because being receptive to mating is literally not in the DNA of females. They have to become unconscious. But the real funnel web spiders aren't exactly innocent themselves. Ground spiders generally exhibit less sexual dimorphism than tree spiders, and the male funnel webs have claspers that they can attach to the female to hold her in place during mating, although the function of these is somewhat debated. But unfortunately, it seems like the most disturbing method is also the most common. Pedophile. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. So, spiders are ectosozoans, they have an exoskeleton and it doesn't grow with them, so not being born fully grown, spiders need to shed their exoskeleton. Analogously, this is the same as you having to flush out and replace all of your bones every few weeks. Now, not having a skeleton once every few weeks is better than never having a skeleton, but it still leaves a very vulnerable period in every spider's life. And if a male tries to mate with a female during this time, she's in no position to defend herself and eat him. But exosis is only necessary if you're growing. Although this is very significantly between species, most spiders don't molt once they've reached maturity, or molt much less. And spiders obviously can't mate until they've reached maturity. The female copulatory openings literally aren't exposed until their final molt. So, when a female spider is recovering from her final molt, her openings are exposed and the male gets one shot. This only lasts a few days out of the entire year, so males often congregate around the webs of immature female spiders to be ready right when she molts. Now you might say, oh, this isn't technically pedophilia because the spider is mature during mating. Yeah, whatever. It's still great. Grooming. Tell that to the judge, Mr. Spider. And some spiders can't even wait that long. Although an immature female's copulatory openings are hidden beneath her carapace, some males still chew through her exoskeleton to preemptively mate with her before she's even capable of releasing eggs. I need to calm down. They're just invertebrates. Well, that's
that's all the time we have for today. I hope you'll agree with me that the new Spider-Man reboot would be massively improved if they took some inspiration from actual biology. Make sure to like, 